Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Subhub Podcast. I'm MK Sullivan. And I'm Danny Moreno. And um, yeah, today we got a fun episode for you. But before that, just some kind of touching upon re- recent news. I'm sure a lot of you saw on social media this kind of, I don't know, James Bondy <laughs> reel. I actually <laughs> really enjoyed it with Jamil, uh, head of Era Vipa. And then it was put across multiple races that are very well known uh like ultra trail trail cape town trans grand canaria canaria uh black canyons 100k and i don't know about you mk but i as soon as it went up i started texting a bunch of people I'm like do you know what this is do you know what this is like what's going on here yeah because um, it was still like pretty vague yeah it was it was super vague and um jameel was just on an episode on single trail or single track sorry and um mentioned nothing of this at least from what I listened to and I felt like it was a really big announcement um but yeah it turns out there is another series folks so this is called the world trail majors and from what I gather I haven't listened to the single track episode where they talk to one of the founders but I think they're trying to kind of bring together the community aspect of trail while still trying to make it a series And it seems like a lot of these events have kind of multiple race options. And so I don't even know if it's, it's all of them or just one of the options. I'll be curious to see if it's just like the hundred K hundred mile distances, or if it also includes like at black Canyon, for example, like the 60 K and if there will be different rankings for um, your participation in different distances, because from what I picked up, it was like, it's a group of independent races. It's not going to be under one big brand, kind of like UTMB is all sponsored by one brand. Um, and there will be a point system that does not have a final necessarily, but there will be prize money given away to people that compete in a certain amount of the races. Um, but yeah, I am curious to see if it is just the longer distances or if it includes all of them. No, it looks, I just looked it up. So it is kind of like that 100K distance. So mm-hmm. for example, for um, Trans Grand Canaria, I think what confused me is they list all the options. They're like, there's a 12K, 21K, but for this specific series, it's the 126K. So mm-hmm. that makes sense, which that's kind of cool. Like, I guess we don't really have a series that's focused on that 80 to 130K range. Yeah, unless you consider like CCC qualifying for that part of a series but you really have to run like one race yeah so yeah, how you are yeah i'm curious to see uh what their requirement is for being in the points like how many 100ks do you have to run in one year to be considered for this prize money and what is the prize money going to look like totally what were kind of like what was your immediate response to it I don't know exactly how I feel about it. I like the idea, right, of this like whole independent race um, conglomerate. But at the same time, every time I hear about a new series, to me, it just kind of dilutes the competition in a way that we like don't need at this point. I feel like at some point, and maybe this will never happen, we have to decide like what is the most competitive and where are we going to go? And every time there's a new series, I feel like we just get further and further away from that, Uh, which also kind of dilutes people's eyes on the sport. Maybe their care for it. If it's like, Oh, well, everybody goes to a different race. So like, how am I supposed to know what to watch? Yeah. How do you feel about it? Yeah. I think initially it's hard. I think my emotional immediate response was I don't want another race series like I'm tired of this I'm tired of trying to find where the deepest fields are or where I think the deepest field is going to be etc um but then I kind of settled into I was like well my empathy or empathetic side was there's not really something like this specifically for the 100k and I think I really believe their intention is good and what they're trying to create and maybe they feel that this is what the other series are lacking. Um, But yeah, I think it will provide that for some people. 
But for me personally, I just want to be in the most competitive races. Like this is my job. (laughs) And that's a big part of why I'm a professional is I'm trying to constantly, you know, move up and stuff like that. Um, And it's also curious because all these races have are pretty dang successful already. Like Black Canyon, arguably probably the most competitive 100K in the US each year, large in part because it's a golden ticket race, but it also just is starting to develop that history. Um, Trans Grand Canario has, is a race I always pay attention to and it hasn't been part, or I guess it's been part of Spartan Trail World, um, but their uh, broadcasting and what they put online and stuff I've thought has always been really cool. So it's a race that I've already been paying attention to. Um, so yeah, I'm just curious to see where it goes. And I'm sure maybe a lot of people can assume this and maybe we can confirm it, but a lot of times where we go to depends on our sponsors and what our sponsors are most interested in. Um, and so I'm just curious if, you know, a brand like Hoka is like, okay, you all need to go in and do well at this most likely not because Hoka sponsors UTMB. Um, so that's probably where you're going to see a majority of the Hoka athletes and same with Solomon. There's no surprise that there's a large majority of Solomon athletes in the top 10 of the Golden Trail World Series each year because um, Solomon is a big sponsor <laughs> of Golden Trail. <laughs> um, so I am curious because there's no brand with this too, like what type of athletes it brings in or if it's athletes who already had have these races on their calendar it's like oh i can also score points for this new series and if i just show up to one more now then i'm in the top five ranking etc yeah and it's obviously a response to like this whole utmb like sellout you know kerfuffle that everybody's dealing with over the last couple of years but um for people who are either trying to get into the sport in terms of like uh, making it their profession or if it already is your profession, it's hard to like leave those um, big corporate series, kind of like you were saying, because it is our job and uh, a lot of brands really look for that in terms of success. So yeah, it'll be interesting just to see how it adds to the already complex (laughs) world of trail running and all of its series. Yeah. And we do have to emphasize the caveat that we're both professional runners, right? And that's kind of where my empathetic lens starts to come in, where I'm like, all these races do have really cool communities, atmospheres, environments. And if that is what a person is looking for, this might be the best series that has come out in the past few years. Um, I think it's just really hard now because there's so many series for a series to be successful. Um, I mean, we're seeing Spartan Trail kind of, be a flash in the pan that's kind of already disappearing and what was that like maybe three years um I know a couple others that have have come and gone and so it gives me hope that you know there's a race director like Jamil who is so tried and true and truly loves the sport who is a part of it so that makes me think like it makes me more curious to see where this one goes yeah and it does help that all of these races in this series are already like successful races on their own. So it's not like they need the support of this like conglomerate. They're just trying to like better the trail world by coming together. Yeah. Yeah. So So, I guess overall kind of mixed feelings. (laughs) Yeah. Overall, we'll see how it goes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, But so next week we're going to be taking a break because it is a holiday. Hopefully you guys will be spending time with your families for Thanksgiving. Um, Danny, are you running any turkey trots or are you just gobbling up the food next week? <laughs> or both? That's a great question. Uh, I actually am going to race um, the Dirt Circus Bentonville 10K, which is a new race. Uh, for a variety of reasons, I have heard really good things about Bentonville, Arkansas. Um, for those who don't know, it's where the Walmart headquarters is. And I don't know if this is like folklore actually true, but apparently one of the, the children of the Walmart family really loves mountain biking. And so they've invested like hundreds and thousands of dollars into building this, like these trails in the town where you can bike from your door, mountain bike from your door. And so I believe that's what we are racing on, um, which should be fun. (laughs) I have mixed feelings about running on mountain bike trails. I I think they are fun because they're different. Like you aren't going to have that in any other type of race. And the the new race director 
or the the race director for this, Rob Goyan, he used to be a head of Trot, I think it was like Trail Racing Over Texas. Trail Racing Over Texas, yeah. Yeah, and he just, I mean, his correspondence with me and, and the other elites that are going is just top notch and just really appreciate him putting so much effort into it. Um, and then I will do a turkey trot with my family too, the week after. What about you? Uh, well, so I was going to say that is not folklore. It is true. Uh, oh. <laughs> the, the, the story that you were telling about the Walmart executive it's, it or the son, it is insane. Uh, Cause I grew up in Arkansas, how much Bentonville has changed because of the amount of money that they've put into just outdoor spaces, specifically mountain bike trails. Like when I went back there for Spartan world championships, I was like, this is a completely different town than it was when I was here 10 years ago. Wow. Um, so it's super cool that they're using that money to uh, get people outside. I have lots of friends who live in Bentonville now that are big bikers. And honestly, I'm jealous of their gravel riding. It looks awesome. Um, but in terms of turkey trots, I actually am not doing a turkey trot unless my sister-in-law uh, cons me into doing one like she did a couple years ago. So we'll see. <laughs> Could be a last minute decision. <laughs> That's awesome. I will say we are a new turkey trot family. This has just started a couple years ago, um, which I think also coincides with my parents' retirement. Potentially they have, they're more excited about doing stuff like that, um, which is really cool for us as kids to just like get out in the morning and everything. Um, yeah. So, you know, kind of for this episode, I want to ask MK, do you remember your rookie year of trail running? Yes. Well, it kind of depends because of COVID. I feel like I had two different like rookie seasons. Um, I had one trail race, uh, way too cool, like one big trail race, way too cool 50K before everything kind of shut down. And so that was like my rookie race, I guess. But I feel like my first rookie season was 2021. And um, it was the year that I had two races that were vastly different. One of which I had to drop out of because I uh, rolled my ankles, had no idea what I was doing, probably should have taped myself up, but I was a rookie, had no idea. And the second one being Broken Arrow, which was, I would say, very successful. I got second place and that was kind of I think my launching point for my trail running career so uh, my rookie season was short but um, a lot of fun I learned a lot about my body and also about um, the types of races I enjoy I guess what about you how was your rookie season no I just love I that's crazy to me that your rookie year is 2020 that's so 20, wild well 2021 2021 yeah but still like I feel like you've been in the sport so much longer. I know. <laughs> yeah, 2021 was technically my trail rookie season, I guess. Dang, that's wild. Um, yeah, I actually had to look it up really quick. <laughs> I always forget when my first trail race was, which it was 2016. Um, and it was a small 10K in San Luis Obispo and just zero fitness. Like at this point in my life, I run maybe once a week you know, and tapped out at like 20, 20 minutes, maybe. Um, I also had gotten really into, don't laugh at me, but like those altitude masks, nothing against those people, but like my face is already so small. So it would just cover pretty much like my entire face. And I would just walk around with that. I don't know what I, why I was into that at the time. And so <laughs> I love that you were like only kind of training, but very into altitude mask. <laughs> Oh, now I remember because I was convinced it was going to help me for spear fishing, like to hold my breath, <laughs> like longer. to hold your breath. <laughs> yeah. So I'd walk around Santa Barbara with like this Bane Max, just like thinking it was cool and trendy, which it definitely was not. Um, and I was running like once a week. Um, but yeah, that was the beginning of my rookie season. I did that race and then I did a race in Santa Barbara. Um, and yeah, I think my rookie year kind of felt like a mix, some weird blur between college life and this weird, I don't know, what would I call it? It's like the weird Danny era where I'm like spear fishing, climbing. It's very rebellious. So it was like college life. Like I was kind of partying a little bit too much or drinking and just going out. But I also was doing all these activities and I was kind of just like loving riding on the edge. And then I started jumping in these trail races and I was winning them because they were quite small. Um, and then I started jumping into bigger ones. I was like, oh, I actually am still competitive. I thought I had lost that spark. 
Um, so yeah, then I went into, this is all within a year, uh, raced way too much. So I think that was the biggest <laughs> thing I remember from my rookie years, just like balling out and being like, oh, I get to win a ceramic muck. I want a beer, you know, like cool things. And then I just burnt out so quick. And then I had like a coming to, to Jesus moment. I was like, do I want to do this? Is this fun? And then I started like really trying. So Ricky and was fun. Like, Maybe I should just race less and then it will be fun. <laughs> yeah. No, I was like, no, I just need to train and race the same. So then the yeah. next year I trained and then still raced myself into the ground. Um, but I have really fond memories of my rookie year because I was not concerned with like trying to be the best I could maybe I don't know how to explain it like it was a weird balance I mean and we kind of cover this with our guests today but just like the uh the pressure isn't there yet because yeah. you're just like you're trying it for fun and then it like works out and you're like whoa I'm actually good at this uh let me try that again and you get that like new magic I feel like for like three or four races at least before it starts to be like okay no I want to be in the top three and then you figure out oh wait I can't be in the top three every time because I can't control what other people do. And yeah, it's just constantly a, a battle of learning how to take care of your brain really. Totally. And I think you said it perfectly. Um, it was like a coming, it was a, a re realization for myself that that is actually like who I am and that's okay. Like I almost yeah. started to hate that part of me. Like, Oh, I hate being competitive. I hate wanting to be progressing and stuff and so I tried to go the opposite way and then when I started getting my butt kicked <laughs> I was like <laughs> I kind of care about this uh, yeah. more than I thought I would um but yeah Ricky here was great uh, overall and so um <laughs> those fond memories uh we today have two who I would consider probably maybe the two top rookies some of the top rookies we'll highlight in our end of year episode um Anna Gibson and Mika Boudin Rousseau. Sorry, Mika, we always mess up your last name, but yeah, I let MK say that because she's way better. <laughs> doing <laughs> international names. Uh, Anna Gibson may or may not be new to you. Um, she had an incredible year. Uh, she came out at Broken Arrow 23K. She had won the VK, got second behind Allie McLaughlin, who we all know and love in the 23K. Um, and then she continued on to challenge Stelina, which is a race where you can race in a Team USA uniform. And she was on the podium there. Um, and then she continued her great year with a podium finish at Pikes Peak Ascent, which was her first Golden Trail World Series race. So huge podium there behind Sophia Lockley and Judith Wider. Fourth at Mammoth Trail Fest uh, and then finished off being top 15 at the Golden Trail World Series final. But the fun thing about Anna is that she still wants to keep doing track. Uh, so she'll share a lot about that uh, in this episode. Yes. And Mika started his season at the Broken Arrow Broken Arrow Trail Races also. He was third um, behind Eli and Chad, who are arguably two of the best sub ultra trail runners in the U.S. Um, and then went on to win the Quebec Mega Trail, kind of focusing his season on the Golden Trail National Series. Um, but then... He bopped around in his van all summer, trained really hard, came out for the two American Golden Trail World Series races, where he was 11th at the Pikes Peak Ascent and second at the Mammoth Trail Fest, um, at which point I think he decided that he was going to go for the World Series instead of the National Series. And he also finished top 15 at the final this year. Um, I would say the two of them had amazing rookie seasons, especially based off the fact that it seemed like neither of them were super sure that they were going to focus on Golden Trail World Series and then uh, still ended up in the top 15 ranking overall. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun to kind of reflect with them after having caught up with them earlier in the year when they originally were brought onto the trail team. Um, so if you haven't listened to those episodes, be sure to go check those out as well. Yeah, and we just do want to emphasize that they both graduated this year. Uh, Anna Gibson from the University of Washington. Uh, she has a sub 410, 1500. And then Mika graduated from Stanford, uh, where his 10 KPR was 2835. So mega NCAA talents uh, coming into the trail. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy this episode. Hey, Anna. Hey, Mika. Welcome back. Hey, thanks for having us. Yeah, it's on again. Stoked to be back. 
Yeah, yeah we, we haven't talked to you guys much since our original like trail team interviews. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> Time has flown by this summer and so much has happened. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool because that kind of gives us like a start into the sport. And then now we can kind of look back retrospectively. Um, but let's start with where are you guys both at right now? And are you guys taking a break? Um, I guess my answer will be short. I'm taking a break. Well, I took a break um, after the Golden Trail final. And then um, I've just been home in Wyoming and getting back into training, but also just keeping it kind of loose with cross training and having fun and hanging out with my family and friends. So yeah, it's been, it's been a chill couple of weeks. Yeah. And I guess for me, I'm also at home right now, uh, currently recovering from COVID. (laughs) Um, and yeah, I have one more race on the calendar this year. I'm going to be heading to Thailand to race my first 50 K at the UTMB major. So I'm super excited for that. It's definitely going to be an adventure. I'm kind of expecting this first 50 K to be a a vision quest. (laughs) I'm assuming uh, that means you're trying to qualify for OCC. Yes, that would be the goal. I would love to have that that option for next year. Cool. And for that, MK, is it still top? No, it's because it's a major then if you're it in the top 10. It should be top 10. 10. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. You'd be surprised. Like a, a 50K might be a vision quest, but I also think you're probably more prepared than you think you are. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. I <laughs> uh, just got to get some, some longer runs in the COVID has kind of thrown a little bit of a wrench into that, but uh, yeah, I'm super excited for it. And it should be a really fun trip. We actually have a couple people from Brooks that'll be going over there. So uh, really looking forward to that too. That's awesome. Um, so you guys both, when we interviewed you, we're still kind of finishing up your track seasons for this year uh, for the listeners as a reminder Anna and Mika were still in college up until this year, pretty much. Or yes, up until this year, Anna even competed at the championships, if I remember correctly. Um, and so I'm just curious, like now looking back, you guys have done so much since you've graduated. And I'm curious, is it like, oh, I'm sad. I miss track. Are you looking back at it with like a loving eye? Uh, is it bittersweet? Yeah, because you're done. You're done with college now. Yeah, I would say it's definitely bittersweet. I definitely like miss kind of like the parts of like the team atmosphere, um, especially in, in in cross country, just having that team to train with every single day. But for me, at least, I was really like looking forward to stepping off the track and onto the trails for most of my collegiate career, actually. I think sometimes uh, probably to the detriment of my performances in collegiate track. So for me in terms of like racing it's just been like really refreshing to be on the trails finally doing what i i love most um and yeah the summer has been been awesome i feel really grateful for all the experiences yeah i think i'm i'm sort of similar like the team environment in college is something special and you know it's it's a great setup to like have everything at your fingertips there's like a million resources you know like you have a bunch of different training partners. Your group could be different every single day. You have a coach who sees you do every single workout, every single run. Um, there's like just every, you know, like at, at big schools, like Mika and I went to, there's massage therapists, there's chiropractors, there's doctors if you need help. And to switch now into like a situation where you're making all of that yourself um, and you're like kind of compiling your village of people who help you. Um, that's a lot of choices and like just that transition I think has been big um so I I I like both models but it's just like a big transition from college to pro um but yeah it's also cool like it's pretty cool to like fledge the nest and um yeah I feel I feel like I was ready by the time my college career ended um to kind of move on to the next thing and I honestly I don't think I've left like too much behind because I do continue to race track um I'll race this winter and spring. So I'm like, you know, I'm not leaving the sport behind. I just have like changed where I'm, where I'm training and who I'm training with. Mika, do you plan to also continue running track or are you kind of like moving onto the trails permanently? I'm focusing exclusively on, on trails might throw in like a road race here and there. Um, 
but I think that will be kind of like to supplement and to like help my my trail running as opposed to like a focus yeah. makes sense Anna for you with track you say the winter and the spring so I'm guessing that's kind of like January February kind of when all comers and startup meets are going and I'm curious are you pursuing that with like the same level of intensity as trail or do you see it more as like something that will enable you to be a better trail runner like are there stones left unturned on the track like are there certain times you want to hit and stuff and that's why you're going to continue yeah I mean I honestly I feel like I have a lot of unfinished business on the track and like I had a really I felt like I was struggling to decide whether I wanted to pursue track or trail and I just like could not see a future with just one or the other (laughs) and I also couldn't really see a future with just one like it was like I don't know I, I couldn't like decide on which one I wanted to do and so I was like okay I guess I'll just do both and like kind of like Mika was saying I think there's a lot of value in racing track or road in terms of trail running but I think the reverse is also true and I look at trail as training for track too, like just becoming like indestructible and a lot tougher and like, wow, you know, 1500, that's not that far when I know I can run 17 miles and like crush my body. Um, so yeah, I, I really want to be like 50, 50 and focus on both. That's cool. And I think it's also so common now that the people that you guys are racing against are also racing on the roads to like improve their speed, um, which in the U S like you know, everybody does stuff like that, but it's becoming more common for the Europeans to also train that way. And so I think it's good to keep that stuff in. Yeah. And I can say for me personally too, like I did not want anything to do with the track for years, but once I like started to return to it, like I was PRing and I, to my astonishment, I was like, why is this happening? You know? And then you start putting the puzzle pieces here. Like, Oh, (laughs) trail makes you really strong. And I felt like my form was significantly better just from running uphill and stuff. So that's, um, that's really exciting. Yeah. Danny and I both have like returned to track as old lady stories that uh, (laughs) include us PRing by a lot from college. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, you're, but it's you're cool. not old, but that's still. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm not old. It's no, we're not old ladies, yeah, but uh, compared to these spry little 22, 23 year olds. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 24. <laughs> Anna's the old woman here. <laughs> Anna, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say too, Anna, kind of what you were saying. I'm sure Mika, in a way, you kind of touched upon this too, is having that team atmosphere already built in. Um, I remember also graduating. And then once I started running again, uh, it came to me, oh, I don't have a free gym and like a trainer giving me <laughs> weights and and all this sort of stuff. Oh, I have to pay for a coach. This is really confusing. And so I was just trying to do everything like the most frugal way possible. Um, and I felt that in college, I actually didn't fully understand how much support we got as athletes, um, even like athletic trainers. And like when you get injured and stuff like that. Um So that's cool that you're able to already kind of like start building that with Brooks. Um, So let's kind of transition to that. You guys both uh, signed, you both debuted at Broken Arrow, uh, Anna in the VK, the 23K, Mika in the 23K. Did you also do the VK? Sorry. Just the 23K. 23K. Um, And Anna, you won the VK and was second in the 23K behind Allie McLaughlin. And then Mika, you were behind Eli and Chad, which like, that is so cool that you guys were competing with who I would consider like the best Americans in sub ultra right now, or, or some of them. Uh, so to do that well in your trail debuts, I know you were kind of on people's radars, but then it was people's eyes lit up like, holy crap, <laughs> they're going to be wicked awesome on the trails. Um, and it looks like you also caught the eye of Brooks. And so we're just curious, like, how was that, you know, debuting and then signing with Brooks? Yeah. I mean, so I had raced the NCAA championships the week before Broken Arrow. Um, and I'd actually sat down with Garrett Heath, who's the sports marketing guy at Brooks. Um, and so that conversation was started for me and I was in like a really great place with it. It was like, okay, I'm interested in Brooks. Brooks is interested in me. And then I went out and I had this like amazing weekend, um, which was great because I didn't have a great weekend at NCAAs. So I kind of like followed it up with like a really exciting, good performance um and then from there it was kind of just like off the races but it was great Mika and I we 
didn't really know each other before Broken Arrow, but we got housed in the same like housing situation there. So we were like living in a house together with a couple of other friends and like, I don't know, we're just going through the process together. We're like talking about our options and like where we're going to go and what we want. And um, honestly, just like that camaraderie was really awesome. And at that point, we did not know that we were both going to end up with Brooks. But um, it's funny in hindsight, like thinking about all the conversations that we had while we were there. Yeah, great, great times. We were just like figuring stuff out like day by day. It was kind of funny. (laughs) Just like, oh, like we have a coach now. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) and so just looking at the brooks team over in europe it seems almost like they have created this team environment that we're talking about coming from the ncaa and i'm curious if either you guys or brooks itself has any intention in like creating a team like atmosphere um of like brooks trail here in the u.s i think their brooks is really putting strides to build up their trail brand in the u.s and is really working really hard to build up the the u.s team and really kind of have that sense of community so like me and anna were both at a brooks uh like trail team camp in buena vista leadville colorado um in august and so that was just so much fun and really cool to meet everybody else that was on on the brooks team and so yeah it made me really excited to be a part of the the brand and I think it's it's cool to see the the team building up yeah and like we also have a lot of mingling with the international team um like we've just spent a lot of time with the Europeans as well which has been super cool like you just immediately have friends and you have like a team and a community um and it's very different than what a college team looks like but it's still you know it's still other people who are all like striving towards the same similar you know similar trajectories as you are Yeah, it's super interesting because I feel that when I first got into the sport, it was almost flipped opposite. Like the lone wolves are who came to trail running. Like I'm here to run by myself. I love the community. I'll show up to the races. But it was kind of these people that had, I don't know, maybe a mixed relationship with running. They left running at some point or they're just finding running, et cetera. Um, And it's been really cool to see within like the last three, four years. how that's changing like all these different teams are starting to create these team atmospheres because uh, athletes like yourself who are coming straight out of college and are you know deciding between if they want to do trail trail road track some version of that like that's what attracts most people and then I think also the people who are um kind of chasing that true sense of professionalism also crave that they're like oh I can't become the best by myself like I want a team I want people to be around Um, and so I'm just curious. So it sounds like that's why you chose Brooks. Like they are creating this actively and that's going to be kind of the vision going forward. Yeah. I mean, I think like, as you said, that model clearly works for professional track, um, and road racing. And so I think there's no reason, uh, looking long-term for that not to also be applied to trails, um, and, in, yeah, in terms of, of team atmospheres, I think, yeah, a lot of different brands and groups are are working towards that. And Brooks is definitely part of them. And it's, it's exciting to see. And yeah. Yeah, all we have left now, I feel like is uh, for brands to start getting teams to like live in the same area so that we can all train together. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> I feel like it's like, we're we're on the cusp of it. Like just by having collegiate athletes coming into the sport now and not just like Danny was saying, your lone wolf um, athletes, I think that alone will start to transition brands to the point where they start making teams that are based in like around a track club almost. Mm-hmm. And even just having more professionalism within the sport, if you have more people that are focusing like full-time on running they can make the choice themselves to like organize in in one location as opposed to having other commitments yeah definitely I am curious I mean you guys are part of Brooks so you're probably super biased but is uh the Brooks team stock rising like is that going to be is this team going to be on the same caliber you know bringing in big wins like Hoka and Solomon and stuff do you think that's like a, a next year thing 
I mean, I mean hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I think we'd be crazy to say no to that. And yeah. <laughs> this summer, this summer was already like proof of that. I think like just between the the European team and you know the team over here in the U.S. Like I think that Brooks is crushing it right now, and like there's a lot of momentum within the brand as well. I know like the marketing department, everyone's super fired up. Like things have shifted around a lot. There's been a lot of success from Brooks athletes, Brooks athletes on the track as well. Um, you know, like Josh Kerr winning a world title, like that's huge. And, um, I think just as a, as a brand right now, like Brooks has a ton of momentum, which is why it's like really cool to be a part of that. So I want to say, yeah, I think we're going to be crushing it (laughs) and think we already are crushing it. It's just going to continue. Brooks and Asics right now are the two brands that I see like um, that didn't really have a a huge stake in the trail world until recently. And it seems to me like they're putting enough resources in that it's like really paying off for them already. Like they have really successful athletes winning races, being in the top 10 and like super competitive races, like pretty much immediately. So brands just need to, you know, put the resources into the sport and the results will come, it seems. Yeah, a hundred percent. And what's cool about that too, is like Brooke's starting to invest more. And I also kind of knew the answer to that question. I just want to hear you guys <laughs> validate it because to me, it kind of opened my eyes at uh, the Dolomites sky race where I was like, holy moly, there's Brooks people everywhere. And then I had heard through the grapevine, not being there, that there was a really cool, like cheering area and stuff um, as well. Uh, so that just is really cool. Cause then it influences I think the entire sport right then more brands want to invest um etc let's uh Anna let's talk a little bit about your season go into a little depth there um so you started out at Broken Arrow and then you experienced some injury um and I'm just curious or we're curious is that what kept you away from Sears now because I thought that was a race that you were signed up for yeah, I was signed up for Sears and all, and I signed up for it like, I don't know, six months before it actually happened because I was a nobody and I didn't think I was going to be able to get in. And I was like, got to save my spot. I was so excited for it. Um, and yeah, then I got hurt um, after USA is on the track, which was uh, three weeks after Broken Arrow. So it was a lot of intense racing, like back to back to back and like a lot of choices and you know just a lot going on with the transition so I was not really surprised necessarily that my body was like okay time for a break (laughs) um but yeah I I like had some cuboid syndrome in my foot which is like a pain that I've had before and it's just annoying and I just had to take some time off so I was almost ready for series and all and then I was like there's no way like I cannot I cannot fly to Europe right now (laughs) and race (laughs) um so took that time off and I I was like ready just in time to go to challenge Stellina, which is where I raced again. And you had a podium finish there, correct? Yeah, I got third there. And then I went and raced um, at Nausicaa as well. Um, I did the vertical race there and then jumped in the the longer race. I think it was 26K there. And the 26K crushed my soul because I was just really under trained <laughs> at that point. I hadn't really run at all in the past five weeks before that. So it was a little bit sandy. And yeah. Challenge Stellina was your first time competing for the US team, right? It was, yeah. How was that experience? I mean, it was super cool. And that's where I was like, okay, I qualified to race in this uniform. I've worked so hard for this. I'm like, I just need to get to the start line. Like I need to be there. And I I sort of knew that it might be like a little bit below my fitness level, um, just in general, having not really trained. And I just was okay with that. I was like, this this trip's worth it to me because it's just an accomplishment to be there. Yeah. You weren't able to do worlds this year because you are still doing track, but is that something you kind of anticipate as being a focus in 2025? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to race worlds. I've just heard so many fun stories about it too. Like now just, you know, kind of being more integrated with like the sub ultra scene. Like there's just a little buzz about worlds that I need to go figure out what that's about. So yes. Yeah. It is super cool that you went into um, the Valsir Mountain Cup and then immediately into Golden Trail. Um, how would you compare the two just from first experience? Um, honestly, I really like both of them. And they're two like very different models, I think, of what sub ultra running is and could be. Um, they kind of, there's some overlap, but they sort of attract like a different runner in a way. Like, um, 
I think the the World Cup especially, it's like there's a race every single weekend that you could go to. You just have to like choose your choose your races that you're stoked about and figure out where you want to go visit. Um, and it's fun how like the points kind of accumulate in all season long. They're like there's a weekend, like a weekly update of like who's crushing it. And I think that is pretty fun. Um, and then Golden Trail, you know, it's it's like really hype and there's a lot of people and it's like, you know, they try and make it more of like a spectator experience. Um, and I think that model is really cool too. Um, so it was cool. Like, yeah, this summer getting to compete in both series and I'm totally torn. I'm like, I could not choose a favorite between the two. They're both really fun. And Mika, you, on the other hand, kind of focused on golden trail. You did some national series and some world series races. Um, so tell us a little bit about living in your minivan and training all summer for these races. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, it was really fun. Um, just traveling around and like staying at different friends' house and just kind of seeing the whole Western U S and getting to run in all these cool places and having these, uh, races kind of in between to like guide my, my schedule and training. And I think what stood out to me the most from that experience was just like how many cool people I met and like all the really fun experiences had along the way. Um, but yeah, golden trail was definitely, what I was most excited about going into the summer. That's kind of what I wanted to focus on, what was kind of guiding my, my schedule. And yeah, I mean, like Anna said, like those races were just like really, really hype. And I think they did a really good job of trying to get good media coverage um, and bringing a lot of spectators in. So it was really fun to be a part of that. Yeah. What's exciting for me as well for you two is that neither of you have done what I kind of coined in a weird way, like the big three. I'm sure this is coined somewhere else. Like neither of you did Zagama, Mont Blanc, or Sears now, which are just like even a higher <laughs> layer of hype. Um, so that'll be cool when, when you guys jump in those as well. Um, Mika, for you, you also, so you did Golden Trail, you did Quebec, um, and I'm just curious if and originally you were trying to go for like that golden trail national spot versus like qualifying through the golden trail world series. Yeah. So that, that was my, my original plan. Um, I mean, when I, oh, the light came back, um, when, when I was planning out my summer initially, I mean, I was unsponsored and I wasn't sure how things would shape out. And so my initial plan was, yeah, to do the Golden Trail National Series and to kind of get a ticket to the final through that. But then, yeah, things went really, really well. Um, and I like was able to get sponsored by Brooks, which was amazing, and ended up qualifying through the World Series, even though I only had two races. And so at that point, it was like, okay, well, um, I can just go to the final uh, for the world series now. And so that was really fun to kind of be a world elite to that, to that end. Um, and I mean, finishing in the the top 20 gives me a bib to all the amazing races you just mentioned, (laughs) uh, like Mont Blanc and Sierra Zanal. And so I'm super excited to get to do those next year since sometimes it's kind of hard to, to get in if you don't have that kind of that elite spot. Yeah, I think it's super nice to have um, two of the races here in the U.S. because it gives athletes who don't already have a foothold like in the kind of elite global scene a way to get into the the series and also into races next year. Um, Because I think if the series was just in Europe, like it just wouldn't it wouldn't have the same effect for U.S. athletes. And therefore, I think it also wouldn't be as competitive. Yeah, no, I think having a series that kind of has races in different places is is really cool and it definitely helps with access and it also provides really unique experiences for those participating just getting to travel to all these different amazing places yeah like we didn't have many u.s athletes qualified for like i don't know that we had anybody in the um golden trail ranking until pike's peak and then all of a sudden it was just like every single U S athlete like (laughs) throws their hat in the ring. And we ended up having like a whole group of U S athletes over at the final. Yeah, no, it was awesome. I mean, we had, yeah. I mean, we had like, obviously we had people through the national series and then like through the world series, we also had like Noah Williams and Nicholas Turco and 
uh, Eli Hemming. And so it was really sweet to have a, a, a big North America squad over there. Yeah, that was exciting to follow along also. Um, do you see yourself trying any of the Valsier Mountain Running Cup next year? I think so, yeah. I mean, I think having, yeah, I think like those, like I think doing more like shorter VK races would be good for me because I think I've realized that's one of my weaknesses in, in trail running is kind of like those shorter, steep uphills. And so I definitely want to work on that. And I think it'll be like Golden Trail is definitely what's going to be guiding my schedule for next year. But I think the World Cup is also just like really fun and uh, talking to people who have done races within that circuit, like like Anna and uh, and Christian. Uh, it's It just seems like a really cool thing to be a part of, too. And so uh, I think it would be really cool to do like kind of a, a block in Europe, getting in like a couple of Golden Trail races, a couple of the Valsier races. I think that would that would just balance things out really well. Yeah, it's pretty cool hearing how each series kind of has their own little family because we just interviewed a couple people who are in the Sky Running series, and they also have nothing but good things to say about the series and how connected everyone is and stuff like that. And of course, we know Gold, the Golden Trail Circus as well. Uh, everyone has. I love everyone in that series too. Everyone's super supportive and et cetera. So it's cool to hear that that's also mimicked in Valsir as well. You can't go wrong. It's like whatever yeah. you pick, there's going to be good people doing cool things. Uh, and most and the likely nice thing about sub ultras that you can pick more than one usually. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I was going to say, that's, what's cool. Like I double dipped this summer and I didn't even race half the season. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. it's possible to do multiple things and I think that's like the coolest thing about where trail running is at right now. It's like, you could choose, you know, you could do a UTMB race, you could do golden trail, you could do Valsir, you could do independent stuff. You could race for your country. Like you can do all these things in one season and like, granted it's, it's hard. And it's like a Tetris puzzle with your calendar, trying to figure out how to make it all work and like not burn yourself out, but it's also fun. And you like, yeah, you get to experience all of it, which is really cool. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Um, we do want to dive into kind of like mentors you've had lessons learned and stuff, but while we're on the topic of topic of golden trail, uh, can you guys just give like a brief of how the final went for you two? Cause I, I, from what I understand, it kind of went a little rough, but I think it still was an incredible end to the, your seasons, your debut seasons, their rookie seasons. That's why they're here. Great rookie seasons. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was super stoked with how my final one, I mean, definitely had a little bit of adversity uh, leading up to it. I mean, I strained my calf during the final miles of the Mammoth Trail Fest. And so I was mostly crashing for like the two weeks following that and then had some some struggles with like international travel, got like uh, food allergy reactions once I was over in Italy. And so I was like, honestly like the the day of the final was like the first day that I felt good <laughs> in Italy <laughs> and I mean it worked out perfectly because then the race like I was able to like put it all together on race day and I think it was the coolest part about it for me was really seeing all of the things I'd learned earlier in the season like come together on the day I think like most of the summer has been kind of a learning experience, like racing into shape, like going into races, being okay, making mistakes and uh, just using them as like very valuable uh, lessons. And I think Italy was like, like everything that I learned just kind of came together and I was able to put it together in a performance that I was really proud of. So that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty awesome. I was like counting the guys as they came through. I was like, you know, because they ran the men's and women separately. So it was really cool. Like I got to spectate the men's race and I was like, oh my gosh, I think he's in 10th. Guys, Mika's in 10th, just like freaking out. Um, yeah, it was really exciting to watch that. Um, and in terms of my race, like I, I think I was excited about it. Um, like 14th is a good result at the final, but um, it also was definitely not like, you know, it, it was not my most exciting result of the season, I think. Um, and I, I also struggled a bit um, coming off of Pikes Peak and Mammoth. I'd rolled my ankle really hard at Mammoth to the point where like in the race, I thought that I broke my ankle um, and I thought I wasn't going to finish the race and then had to get down off the mountain. It was like, there's only one way. Um, so I, I struggled and it was not great going into the final. And I showed up and I was like, cool. 
this course is actually pretty technical, even though Greg Vallee says it's not. I've learned to trust that, that that's not always like a good representation of it. So yeah, I knew it was going to be really hard. And, um, and it was like, I, I got totally humbled, but I think for, for it being the type of course where like, you can never actually relax or you settle in because every section was different. Like every 3k was like some new obstacle and some new challenge that you had to overcome. Even like, you know, you get down into town cause it was this like loop format. And so you get into town after running a couple K out in the mountains, just like crushing your body. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, time to go run like, you know, 5.30 pace through the city where there's like a whole bunch of tight turns and people and it's loud. Like you can never relax. And I think given all of that and how I felt going into the weekend, like I was really proud of my result. Um, I think it was like just solid, you know, solid end to the season. That's awesome. And how did you feel about the setup of um, like the prologue and the main race, as well as the setup of having the men and women race on different days? Honestly, it was awesome. Like I, I think the prologue for me, like I was kind of like just scared, (laughs) you know, it's like biggest event of my life so far, like show up there. My ankle's not great. I literally raced in an ankle brace because I was so scared. I was going to roll it and not be able to race the main event. And so I was like, okay, I'm just going to kind of like go out and do what I can do, but not crush myself and really not roll my ankle. And so then I got all the nerves out on that day. And then I like showed up to the final. Um, and it just was like, so fun. Like a bunch of the guys were out on the course cheering for us. Um, it just made it like feel so much more like community oriented, I guess. Um, just cause everyone was like able to support each other a little bit easier than I think when we're all racing together. Yeah, I would definitely second that. I think also too having the men and women race on separate days was really cool because I really just enjoyed spectating and getting to watch and cheering people on. I think it it brought a lot more attention to both races uh, separately to have that that format. And the prologue was definitely. I think that's a really cool format for Golden Trail to have going forward. Uh, it was it was kind of interesting for me because I like, I feel like I'm still at the point where if I run a hard downhill, like my legs are going to be pretty sore. Like I'm still working on like doing that adaptation. So I very much went into the prologue with kind of the mindset of like, okay, I'm like, not like, not going to go like all out on this. Going to like, just do like a hard tempo and like try to preserve the legs for the final. Um, and even doing that, like the next day I was like, oh, like everything hurts when I run. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's a really cool to have like kind of a shorter race than have like something longer and and bigger. I think it, it also rewards different strengths for people that are in the, in the series. Yeah. I thought it was awesome that they did that. It almost reminded me of college conference, you know, usually it's two days and (laughs) you could switch off (laughs) seeing people. Um, and last year I got sick at the final, so I got to spectate and it hit me that I never actually watch these races because we're in them. And so I thought that was just so cool uh, seeing the reels of, you know, Ambogo going crazy with the colors as <laughs> the women were coming in and, you know, just all the men out there and then vice versa, the women going crazy for the guys. Um, so, yeah, I thought that was really cool, too. And yeah, congrats on on those great races and, you know, finishing up your first year in Golden Trail. Um, you guys got a little bit of everything, which is awesome. A little exposure to all the different types of things. Yeah, it was super fun. <laughs> so many, so many great memories. <laughs> yeah. And so now we'll move on to just kind of, I guess, a reflection of your rookie season. Um, so first question would be, how do you feel like you've handled your first year as a professional? And do you feel like having mentors for the trail team has helped? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, I think like results say one thing about how it was handled (laughs) and like the actual experience maybe says another, like for me, I think I had, you know, like all the best results of my life have been in the past six months. And all of that was like, you know, in my Brooks uniform and like, that's, yeah. I mean, that's, that says like some level of like, yeah, things went great. Like I made a good choice and I've continued to train well and I came off of college well. Um, but at the same time, like it is really freaking hard, like to come to come out of college and like 
then keep racing and um, figuring all these things out, like while you're trying to put together good training blocks and like traveling all over the world. Um, it's just a lot. And so I think I like handled it moderately well, I'd say like well enough to, to still perform well. Um, but also like, that's not to say that it was without challenge and, and struggle and that like, honestly, I'm still making a ton of decisions. Like, I don't know what my track season is going to look like or where I'm going to be necessarily. Um, so it's, it's just an ongoing process. Yeah. I think, I mean, for me, I think it was just like a very exciting time with like a lot of uncertainty. And I think, um, I'm the kind of person that likes to have like, like a, a very concrete plan. And so I think it was kind of about embracing that kind of uncertainty and just kind of going with the flow, going day by day and uh, race by race. And so I was, yeah, super excited to that things worked out with, with Brooks um, and very excited to be racing on the trails. I think I kind of like lost a little bit like through college of like my like love for racing and and competing a little bit like I wasn't having as much fun out there as I, I used to and I really rekindled that during the summer being out in the trails and in the mountains doing what I love most so that was like honestly probably like the biggest success of the summer and what I'm most proud of and then I guess yeah I mean the results also like also, like Anna said, like I probably had the best season of racing in my life. It was kind of a, a breakthrough in, in terms of that. And I think that really speaks to the importance of prioritizing fun in in the process, because I mean, inevitably, that's that's why we do this. It's it's because we like it. But sometimes it's easy to get too bogged down in like some of the specifics uh, of, of details and, and training. And sometimes you you kind of lose that spark. And so I think that's been my biggest takeaway of the summer. And I'm just really grateful for all of the experiences that were had. Yeah. And I would second that you both had incredible years of racing, both earned a podium in a golden trail world series race. Uh, Anna was third at Pikes peak. Mika was second at mammoth trail fest. And then Anna, you had another top five at mammoth trail fest, both top three at broken arrow. Um, so yeah. I can also uh, <laughs> second that. Um, I am curious now looking back, do you guys, are you happy that you guys started racing trails so quickly after track? Or do you think you would have taken more of a break and that potentially would have led to a, a different results? Yeah, it was definitely an interesting transition and like one that I thought about a lot. I think, I mean, I had a pretty disappointing track season um to end off my my college years and so part of me was kind of very excited and and refreshed to just go straight onto the trails and like unleash all that that fitness that I felt hadn't really been proven in uh an actual race during track uh, onto Broken Arrow and have that great result there um so that was that was really nice and then I think but then yeah I mean coming off a of track like uh like I needed to take a break. So I ended up taking a couple of weeks off in, in the middle of the summer and then building back up from there. So I do think like having time off and kind of a reset period is, is important. But I mean, in retrospect, I think I'm, I'm happy the way I structured it because it allows me to extend my, now extend my trails in a little bit longer than I initially planned, um, like very spontaneously added uh the thailand race to my schedule um and i think if i had just gone straight from track into like an extended full trail season uh i would be like my body would be done by now and i wouldn't be able to to add that on and, and have fun trying my first 50k <laughs> yeah i mean i guess i was sort of similar like i was forced to take my break which like came you know, the first week of July through the end of August, pretty much like that was my, my break. And I, I honestly feel sort of grateful for it now. Like I survived that time with like a lot of hours biking and it worked like fitness wise. So I'm not like too mad about it. I think it, it ultimately helped me out too, because racing even up until the golden trail final, like that's pretty late, um, you know, having that be mid October. So I'm glad it worked out. I think it, 
it will be an interesting experiment to figure out like what happens without that break forced upon me in the future. Um, transitioning from track to trail, I think that's like the hardest time of year to figure out what to do. Um, like, is there a way I can do without a break? Is there going to be overlap? Am I going to switch from one to the other and then back? Like, that's just all stuff that I think I'm going to continue to need to experiment with over the next couple of years. Yeah, Anna was crushing the biking. <laughs> I remember like opening up Strava and seeing like 100 mile bike rides. And I'm I'm a terrible cyclist. <laughs> so I was just like, damn, <laughs> <laughs> she's putting in the work. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm, I'm curious to see how both of you just, uh, like figure out these schedules in the future, just because it doesn't work the same for everybody. Um, you know, I'm sure Danny has tried, I've tried to copy other people's schedules in the past years. And it's just like, okay, so that doesn't work for me. Like it does for Danny. This doesn't work for me. Like it does for Tessa, you know, whatever. So you'll figure it out and what works best for you and just, uh, be patient, you know? Yeah. yeah. Any, any and all advice welcomed also. <laughs> yeah. Send us your schedules, you know, we'll, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll you two seem like the experts we should be asking. So <laughs> that's what we're working towards, you know? Yeah. Consulting. <laughs> yeah. Consulting. <laughs> Our retirement plan is consulting. <laughs> yeah. Next, next podcast episode is consulting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Schedule consulting specifically. Oh we, yeah. We are doing that though. That is yeah. our next podcast episode is oh, wow. how, to, how, how to build a race calendar. Um, <laughs> can, can we be on? Joking. Can you help us out? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. hundred <laughs> percent. Oh my gosh. I say that so much. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, kind of just like, just to get to this one more time is like, you guys were part of the trail team this year. That's where we first introduced you to our audience was through the trail team. Um, this is the project that Andy Wacker started up where it's kind of like seeding, uh, athletes mostly from NCAAs that are interested in trail and to give them with a you know a panel of mentors and so we're just really curious like how is that mentorship process and or did you find other mentors in the sport and was that helpful for you yeah I think for me like honestly a lot of my mentorship that I've received um and kind of like leaned into the last six months or so has been like like more organic. Like I think that the trail team has been useful in other ways, like just in terms of community and connecting with people. Um, I mean, that's initially how Mika and I met and like, you know, that's how I've met a lot of people in the sub ultra space. Um, but like a lot of my mentors have been people who I've just sort of connected with like very organically at races or, um, honestly, even just like remotely, like people just kind of you sort of just like connect, you know, you find, you find your people, you know, who's out there cheering for you. And then as soon as you're like, oh my gosh, I need help. You're like, oh, that person, like I should reach out to them and ask them this question that I've had um, and see what their experience has been. And it's almost like, uh, I heard this term about a year ago called friendship. And I love that. Cause it's like, we all have different things to contribute to each other. You know, like maybe I'm, <clears throat> I'm giving a friend something and then they're giving me advice in return. And it's like, not necessarily one older person and one younger person but it's just like this very organic like friends helping friends and I I really like that I think I've had a lot of those relationships over the past six months yeah I think for me like the trail team has been biggest in terms of the community um I mean it was really cool just showing up to Broken Arrow and like I knew a couple people there but then having the trail team and this like massive community, I think it really made me feel at home within the trail running world pretty much immediately. And I mean, that was, that was huge. Just having like so many friends right off the bat um, that I like saw later in the summer, like stayed at some of those friends' houses when I was bouncing around in the van. Um, and I think having that support structure was, was huge. I guess in terms of mentorship per se, um, I think my, like I started working with David Roach as a coach, uh, right after Broken Arrow, and he's kind of been my guiding light this summer in terms of mentorship and figuring things out. Um, and it's just been an awesome experience working with him. It's kind of like a college team in a way where you just kind of get thrown into your college friends. Like you have a choice a little bit, but it's also like, here's your automatic friends on the team. Uh, so I'm sure that 
was really nice to just kind of have a community right off the bat. Um, did so, you pick up a coach too, Anna? Sorry. I'm oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm also working with David Roach, who's been like insanely helpful for me, um, like through the transition also just with like, you know, decision-making it's like gone far beyond just writing workouts, I think, <laughs> um, so, which has been amazing to have somebody supporting me like that. That's awesome. And so what are the biggest lessons that you guys learned in your rookie season? Um, whether they were hard lessons or good lessons. Oh man, so much. <laughs> I feel like that's been the theme of the entire summer is just like learning as much as I can day by day, race by race and being okay with failure um, as a part of that learning process. I mean, <laughs> In terms of fueling and hydration, I went from carrying gels in my hand and filling my water bottle in the creek at Broken Arrow, <laughs> just like finding these like little pools of snow melt <laughs> to like end the year, just having this like super organized, like hydration and, and fueling strategy with like an actual belt to carry stuff like gels, um, like even at the Golden Trail final, like dropping off bottles and then being handed those like between different loops. Um, so that was like definitely like a a fun learning experience that I feel like I have pretty well dialed now. Um, and then I guess also just I, I, in terms of racing, just like learning to run my own race, I think, and figure out my strengths was super important. I think in track, you're kind of conditioned to never let gaps open up. Um, like in a track race, like if you're kind of falling off the train, like it's kind of over. <laughs> it's really hard to to rally. And usually at, at that point, you're like giving everything you have to stay on. But in trail racing, I mean, the terrain is just constantly changing and people have different strengths. And so sometimes it's in your best interests to run your own race and let people go to then save your energy for the, the part that you know you can do better than anybody else. And so that was also a, a, a big learning experience um, that was super valuable. And I think... I was, I like really had that dialed down to by the end of the season. Yeah, those are two like really good ones. Um, I like, I like that last one, especially I think like the transition from track onto the trails, like in your head, you have to think about these races so differently. Um, and like, I, I had this experience at, at Pikes Peak. I was like, okay, biggest goal is to be so chill the first hour because this race is so stinking long. Like I've never raced anything even close to that. And like, I want to be like literally jogging because otherwise I'm not going to make it. And like that mental switch of like jogging off the line and doing that for an hour was so different than the 1500 for me. So I think, yeah, just figuring out how to, how to mentally approach things was a big learning curve. Um, and then also I think like I just think all of my breakthrough this summer has been like pretty much a direct link to like having a great time and just not being stressed. Like there's just, especially during your rookie year, it's like, there's so much less riding on every event. Like if you fail, it's like, well, it's my first try. Like, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't a whole bunch of thought that went into that. Like we know that strategy doesn't work. Let's do something different. Um, and I think that's like a very unique position to be in when you're doing something new that you've never done. And so that was, you know, that was me every single race. Cause they were all different. Like Pike's peak was just uphill. It was at altitude, like, okay, that's new. Then mammoth it's up and down, but 17 miles long. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Never done anything like that. That's new. You know, Italy's new with all the different like technical stuff that I've never raced in an event before. Um, and just like being, yeah, like Mika said, just being okay to, to like fail and take those risks and like more often than not, it actually works out, which is crazy. So like just going in and, and being loose and having fun and accepting failure if it comes, which it probably won't. Um, yeah. I think that was like my biggest learning this season. The key now will be to um, prepare your, what if I start feeling pressure strategy? Exactly. Yeah. Like it's a sweet spot that we're in right now. And that will change going forward. And I, I mean, I experienced that like in college too. It's like the first time you do everything, it's all exciting and it's all new. And then you have to figure out how to like keep that going while you like repeat the same races, you race the same people. Um, so I think, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see. That's my goal for next year. Yeah, I love that. 
Mika, I wish I would have seen you fill up your bottle at Broken Arrow 23K and the snowball. Because <laughs> I just think that's incredible that you stopped and filled it up <laughs> with the aid stations and stuff. I feel like maybe that's part of your adventure mind because you have done like a bunch of backcountry stuff. You're like, oh, there's water right there. I need to get it. Um, so I'm glad that you learned through that lesson. Um, but yeah, you will have to do that sometimes, uh, for sure. So definitely I, I was gonna say open I, to that OCC. Yeah. <laughs> You'll definitely OCC, okay. do that. Yeah. Mont, Mont Blanc <laughs> Marathon. Mont Blanc Marathon, I was so dehydrated that I uh stopped at a creek and I thought, you know, if I get Giardia, it'll probably be after I finish the race. <laughs> so I'd rather drink this than uh die on the side of this trail. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and you still got third. That's incredible. I, I love that one. Um, but yeah, I think you guys both touched on something that you not only learn in your rookie year, but you just keep evolving as you go on because the fun thing I found about trails and I'm sure MK as well is like some years you're like, wow, I'm a great climber this year. I need to capitalize on my climbing for whatever reason, like that training block translated to you having Uber boosties on your uphill. And then there's been a couple of years where I'm like, dang, I can smash technical downhill. Whenever I see a technical session section, that's where I'm going to uh, capture people. Um, that was a weird way to say that. <laughs> um, so yeah, it'll be cool to see, you know, checking in with you guys again next year, like what your takeaway is um, of the, of that, of those same lessons. Like they're going to evolve as you evolve as humans. So that's awesome. Um, what came easier than you expected? Hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> I think maybe just the the race length. Like I, it was something I was like always a little bit skeptical about going in. Um, I mean, I knew coming from college that going longer was always my strength. I always felt like, like, like in the 10 count of the track, like I could keep going forever, but I just couldn't pick it up at the end. But I was still like kind of wondering like, okay, like a two hour race, it's like four times as long <laughs> as as what I'm used to like how is how is this going to go but yeah I think it like I was kind of surprised by how um much easier that that came um and like by the end of the year like racing the half marathon champs uh like it was it almost felt short compared to those long races yeah we can't forget to highlight that Mika is our U.S. trail half marathon champion that's awesome thank you <laughs> Um, I'm like sitting here. I'm like, I'm glad Mika went first. Cause I still don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> um, my first thought was like Pike's peak. Like, I don't know why that was just so magical for me, but it was like Pike's peak should be soul crushing. And it was like the best day of my life. And I just don't really know like why, you know, like there's, I've, I've put a lot of thought into it. Like a lot of things did go right, but I definitely didn't feel right. I definitely was not as fit as I should have been. Like there's just a, like a lot of stuff that like, I don't know how I overcame that, but I did. And so that day was just for some reason, like so amazing for me and I had so much fun and like this ran out of my mind and I'm just, yeah, that day, Pike's Peak, that just came easier than I thought it would. <laughs> Such a cool race. And I mean, it, it makes sense because you, you grew up in alt at altitude. I think that's probably a big part of it. Um, and, and just, you're pacing it extremely yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. Which not like, just, I, but that also, helped a lot. Yeah, that helped a lot. But like, I don't even know. I mean, that I think is a huge shout out to David. Like we were talking on the phone and I was like sitting on the floor of my Airbnb room and he's like, okay, I really need you to chill. Like he had to get it through my head that like the first hour I needed to jog. And I'm so glad he did that because I would have probably ruined my race very very early on <laughs> otherwise yeah because so. people go hard off the line at that race <laughs> <laughs> mika just raised his hand uh, so <laughs> i'm assuming he went off hard went off the line hard <laughs> a little too hard <laughs> yeah it, it gets it gets all of us at some point especially like racing the europeans they pretty much never go out chill um so you just have to like figure out what your strategy is against them going out as hard as they can yeah, and what works. I still get to do that race, but I watching your performance this year on, I hope that maybe that's in your calendar again next year. Cause you know, with some more training, I could see you, you know, 
moving up that all time list very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely want to go back. It was so fun. I am sad to hear I I it's been rumored that it's not on Golden Trail anymore. I know. Um, which yeah. is a bummer, but I still plan to go if I can. Like it's such a cool event and just like the history also of that race and it meant a lot to my mom. My mom used to race it back in the day and it's just cool like being a yeah. part of something that has such a big tradition. But yeah, that's so cool. And for it to have, like you said, so much history. So you could compare yourself to all the greats that have run it before. Um, and yeah, I know crossing the fingers to see if that stays on the schedule. We time will only tell in the next month or so. I just can't believe that Remy would allow them to take it off. Yeah, me neither. He <laughs> said at the top of the mountain, that he wants I'm going sub to stop too. too. And so I feel like that alone would leave it in the series, but who knows? <laughs> So I guess, stop now. oh yeah, seriously. <laughs> so I guess to wrap up the episode, um, what are you guys looking to next year in terms of your schedules and goals? If you've even gotten to that point after your break. <laughs> oh man. I mean, I think first goal is going to be to learn how to ski to get some good crash training in this winter. <laughs> going to have to get some wisdom out of Anna for that. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, I haven't really like, like crafted like a specific schedule for 2024 yet. Still kind of waiting for some race organizations like Golden Trail to announce like officially what's going to be, what the races are going to be. But there's a lot of races that I'm like super excited about. Um, and I think Golden Trail will definitely be like kind of the, the series that'll be kind of guiding my schedule. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to have those, those race race schedules kind of come out and then start working on it hopefully during the holidays are there any races that you can mention that you're excited about um I mean I'm super oh, there's there's so many <laughs> uh Sierra's and now I'm really excited to come back to to Mammoth um maybe be part of the UTMB final uh like either do an OCC or, or ETC uh let's see how how Thailand goes um and yeah, I mean, Bro Broken Arrow and, and Mont Blanc Marathon are like two races that I like, I don't know, like Broken Arrow is just so close to my heart. And Mont Blanc Marathon is one that I've really been wanting to do for a long time. So we'll see if I do the Hemming double. Let's go. Double for that. But that would be that would be really cool if that worked out. <laughs> um. Man, yeah, thinking of all these races, I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. That sounds fun. Um, first and foremost, I think the thing that I've like thought about the most after my break has just been track and um uh, figuring out what I'm excited about there. And um, I mean, I think like the focus of my season this year is to race well at the Olympic trials, which is the third week of June. Um, so I'm kind of just like setting up my track season to to be prepared to run well there. Um but then, yeah, I don't know what comes after that. Like if track's going really well, I'll probably race a little bit more into July. And and if not, or if I just want to change, like I'll switch back over to trail. And um, yeah, I love Broken Arrow. And like, I think that might be where my season starts off again. Like that is just such a fun event. And I love that area. Um, so I'll, I'll probably go back there. And um, I'd like to race more of the Golden Trail World Series. Like I think it's like Mika mentioned earlier, it's like promising. We both only raced two out of three opportunities to score points during the main season. And like I finished 12th and Mika was 14th overall in the series. So it's like, okay, what happens if we like focus on this? And we were like trying to, you know, rank ourselves high in the world series from the get-go instead of like thinking, oh, maybe I'll be like national series. Um, just that like mindset shift of like that being your focus. So um yeah, I'm curious to see what the schedule is. I'm I think that, that will change my trajectory quite a bit is are the u.s trials the week before broken arrow next year i think so okay yeah. sick nice what is the olympic um standard for the 1500 oh the olympic standard oh my gosh don't put me on the spot that's scary <laughs> <laughs> low four it, minute something i was gonna um, say like four oh something yeah but, i mean to qualify for the trials i think you have to be top 32 of times run in the country which um, what's, what's weird about this year is that the the qualifying window opened before the U.S. championships this past year, like the one that I ran in uh, July. So I think my time, like I've run 409, 
And I think like that will probably be in the top 32. Um, like yeah. I'll try to run faster this spring, but I think like I have a good opportunity to like probably race at least. Yeah, no, definitely. That's that really seems, cool. That seems like a much larger window than normal for track qualifying. Yeah. It's kind of big. It's like a full year. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Dang. That's really cool. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we will most likely see you more on trail after June. Yeah. 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 I, I won't race trail probably at all until at least July. Dang. This is kind of bringing me back to the last trials where I was at Western States and there was just this huge crew watching Grace and Murphy and she like won one of the heats and the, everyone was going crazy. Um, so that's cool. I, I really hope that you are there as well. Cause having the whole trail community also cheer on track people, it just feels like a crazy month of everything with broken Arrow, Mont Blanc, Western States, Lavaredo, Olympic trials, the list goes on. Seriously. Yeah. It's a big, <laughs> big month for sure. Thing. Um, well, thank you both for joining us again. It was nice to catch up on your seasons, hear about your lessons learned. Uh, do you guys want to close with any thank yous, remarks, et cetera? Just really grateful for everyone that I met this summer. <laughs> yeah. All the good times had. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would second that and, um, yeah, also just like, thank you, Danny and MK for, for having us back. Um, I guess we didn't do too terribly the first time, <laughs> but yeah, it's been great getting to know you guys as people as well, um, outside of the podcast and yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, of course. Thanks for joining us. This has been the Sub Hub brought to you by Free Trail. 